welcome to the first episode of The Journey. On this show, we talk to interesting people with interesting stories. My name is Vishan and I'm joined by India's youngest best-selling author, Savi Sharma. She's best known for being a self-published author and a storyteller. Welcome to the show, Savi. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. So, Savi, how does it feel like coming back to the place you were born? And do you have any fond memories of living with your grandparents over here when you were? It was great to be home again and uh, I keep visiting Haryana often. The best memory I'll say of being in Haryana is when I was in second standard. I wrote my first poetry and since then I'm always writing. So to be back in your hometown, it's just a beautiful feeling. Alright, so talking about writing, so now we are all set for your third book. But uh, what about the one that got away, the book that you actually did not publish, that you've spoken about in your other interviews? Yes, that you Silent took... Love. Silent Love. Yeah. So you took a lot of time to write it, but you decided not to publish it. Is there a reason why and was there uh, an impact or some sort of inspiration that you drew for your other books that you actually put out? So I started writing Silent Love when I was in first year of my college. That was the first book I started writing. Like, uh, I was waiting for my CA IPCC results and there were 10 days. And in those 10 days I read around 15 books. Mm -hmm. That was the time I realized that I want to write one book. And I started working on Silent Love. And it took me four years because I was doing my graduation and my CA studies and my internship. So uh, once the book was completed, it was 50,000 odd words. But once the book was completed, I felt that it's inspired or influenced by the initial books which I wrote, uh, which I read. Uh -huh. And I felt that, you know, this is a good story. I gave it to my friends and they really liked it. They said that such books are bestseller in the market. Mm -hmm. I said, they may be. And it's a good story, I know, but it's not a great story. It's not something I want to get published with because I felt I can write better. I can write something which can inspire people truly. And so I decided to write another story. And that journey of four years, that journey of 50,000 odd words, that really helped me to complete my first book, Everyone Has a Story, and my second book in four to five months. Oh. So it really helped me. Truly. So did you like... There were, were there excerpts that you took and you used in your uh, new book, in your first published book, Everyone Has a Story? Uh, was there, were there no, small... No, nothing. So it was completely different. Completely a new story. All right. So coming to the point where you were studying and you were writing your first book and then you wrote your second book. So talk to me about the situation there was at home. I think 10, 12 days before your CA final exams, you decide, you turned up in front of your parents and you asked them, you told them that you do not want to pursue CA yeah. anymore and you want to be a writer. So what kind of conversation was that and how did they feel back then and how do they feel now, now that you are a published author, best-selling author? Okay, so yeah, uh, when I started writing the book, my parents didn't know that I'm writing something. Once the book was completed, and I decided I need to self-publish it. Everything was final. And then I told my parents that I want to be a writer. And I, don't, I want to quit CA right away. Mm. They were very disappointed and very shocked. <laughs> like, uh, your exams are near and you are saying you don't want to do CA anymore. So I said, yeah, because I want to be a writer. And I really don't want to waste any more time doing CA. So they said, complete your studies. Get a degree and then do whatever you want to do. If you don't want to do a job, it's fine. But right. at least get a degree because Indian parents have that feeling. and uh, So they feel that, you know, you need to have a degree, a secure right. job. Because whatever you do in life, once you have a degree, mm -hmm. at least you can get a job anytime, anywhere. But I said, no, I don't want to do any job as a chartered accountant. I don't want to study anymore. So they were very disappointed. They asked me to talk to my professors and anybody like talk to him, talk to her, just, just, you know, do your studies. I said, no, I don't want to. Then they felt that, you know, if I am so uh, resented and I'm so resilient to study, they felt that I won't be giving my 100%. It won't be of any use to ask me to study. So they said, okay, do whatever you want to do. But I knew they were very disappointed. But I knew that for the first time in my life, I was very sure that this is what I want to do. Who did you talk to? to get a little more courage when it comes to pursuing what you wanted to do when everybody else was asking you not to. So was there somebody who helped um, you through this whole time? See, actually, I was a very indecisive person in my life. Like I has been As we all are. Huh? As yeah, we all like, are. I was much more. Like, I couldn't even decide I want to wear red or white today. Okay. I was such kind of person. But for the first time in my life, I was very sure. So I didn't talk to anybody. I said, uh, whatever you want to talk, you can talk, you can ask me or, you know, you can just say anything, but I'm very sure I want to do this. So they just gave up on me. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, uh, but I knew that I'll make them proud one day. And I was very sure about it. 
and Talking today they are very proud like yeah. uh, when my second book was launched uh, so at that time my father said like in front of 100 people that you know i was wrong that i was trying to stop her from doing what she loves hmm. but today i appeal each and every parent out uh, there and to each and every person that let your kids do whatever they want to do and they'll make you proud one day today they are very very happy and hmm. they feel proud that i chose what i wanted and not what they wanted for me all right great so now you've gotten their permission sort of you're not doing your ca exams and you've started writing your first book so there are two phases in this where you start writing your first book you finish your book and you start selling your book yeah. so what according to you was harder and what did you learn from it so writing your first book mm -hmm. or selling your first book see both the phases were difficult definitely because uh, writing was a beautiful phase Def uh, it was difficult at times because i didn't know what to write next but i got to learn many things about myself or things you know which i need to change in my life or to improve in my life during the journey of writing my first book when it came to selling i self published my books so it was kind of one man army all right like i just had a friend ashish who helped me throughout the journey in all self publishing right. and in marketing i got to learn many things about marketing like how to market your book and which is uh, which are the best ways to do that mm -hmm. it was a difficult phase and uh, definitely selling is more difficult because while writing you are writing for yourself right but while exactly. selling you need people to buy your book and okay. it's difficult when you have to appeal the audience to read your book so it was difficult but it was a beautiful phase like i won't say it was a struggle mm -hmm. i'll say it was a beautiful phase i learned lots of things about the market about people and about myself so maybe if you do if you cannot find a way you have to create your own way yes true so i'm assuming you inspire a lot of people who want to write right yeah people think so the thing is the problem over here is about i face if, if i want to write a book the problem over here is i you've suggested read a lot of books mm -hmm. read as many books as you can but i have fear of uh, getting influenced by the type of writing that they have and i do not want to I want to have my own way of writing, right? You have your own style of writing. So how do you develop that? So the thing is that uh, many people say that you know we already have our story and we right. don't want uh, to read other books to know that what we want to write. But the thing is, you might have a story, you might have something to write about. But mm -hmm. unless and until you read, you won't get the words. It may happen you know that this is what I want to write. When you sit down to write, you mm -hmm. just don't know that what you have to write and how to express your feelings. So right. that's why you need to read lots of books to get those words to know how to express. If you read fifteen to twenty books, you know you will get influenced by them. But when you read hundreds of books, right. you don't get influenced. You just learn that okay, these are the ways you can tell your stories. So you get to learn that okay, a story doesn't have to just you know begin. Uh, there has doesn't have to be a beginning, a middle, and an end. Right. You can keep the end at the first. Okay. The middle can be changed, and you get to learn lots of styles of storytelling. So for that, you need to read. Okay, so you need to you really open need yourself to. up to different types of writing. Yeah, because only when you read lots of books, you'll know that okay, you can narrate a story in such a way, All and right. you get to know that okay, uh, such stories are there, or such stories are something which you are influenced with or which you like. Right. So you can uh, learn many things from them. So you really need to read if you want to write one day. So, Savi, for our next segment, we'll do a deep dive in your Instagram, pull out mm -hmm. interesting pictures, mm -hmm. and. Ask you about the pictures, which probably need a little more context. Okay. The first photo that we have for you is the one, in my opinion, should be the best example for irony, because you gave up your CA studies. Yeah. And you were asked to give a talk at the CA Institute in Dubai. Yeah. So tell us about how this went about, and uh, what did you talk about? Like, okay. To not pursue CA. <laughs> it was actually an irony like i left my uh, ca studies to pursue my dreams and right. there i was talking to like 800 chartered accountants talking with them about dreams about following their dreams so it was a great day for me actually like uh, you know you left your ca studies and then you're talking to 800 chartered accountants and talking to talking with them about uh, following your dreams and to do things which they love in your their life and everything but it was a fun event i really enjoyed it you really enjoyed it so yes. did, so how many CAs did come up to you and ask you, okay, am I doing the right thing? Should I pursue something else? I always wanted to pursue something else. I'm assuming there must be a lot of people, not just CAs. Yeah, so uh, there were 800 chartered accountants at that uh, session. And all were like uh, double of my age, actually, 40 plus, eight, uh, or 50 years old, 60 years old. Right. And they said that uh, we are doing chartered accountancy. We wanted to do, and that's why we are doing. But still, I feel that something is missing in my life. 
what should I do about it? So that was really a great feeling that you are talking to somebody, you are actually explaining somebody double the age of yours that what they should do in their life. So it was a great feeling, like really. <laughs> so next photo is the one which like sort of signifies your journey. Mm -hmm. So that this photo is with Durjoy Dutta Durjoy. And, you and you speak about uh, meeting him as a reader and then yeah. hanging out with him as a peer. So how has it been like? So uh, actually there, there was this event so I just went to that event. I didn't even know that Durjoy is coming there. Uh, I just went because uh, my friends wanted to go and there Durjoy was there. And the irony was that uh, he came at that session when I was uh, writing my first book, like oh. Silent Love, All back right. then. All right. So when I met him, we just took a picture and okay, like I knew I wanted to write. I never attended any session of an author by then that time. So it was a good feeling and when I met him as a friend, as a co-author, like you know, as a peer, so it was like a complete circle, right, meeting an exactly. author as a reader and then, so it was really special to meet him as a author friend. So your next book is the sequel to your first, first book, Everyone yes. Has a Story, and to be very honest, there's one character that most of us at Zostra relate to is Vivan, who yes. is a traveler, and in the book he gives up his job and just goes about traveling. Traveling, yeah. So, Nisha, Kabir, Vivan, what are we expecting? What can we expect in the new book? So, in the new book, the, their story is going on and they are uh, challenged by fate. Alright. So, you can call it fate, destiny, karma, anything. So, okay. the story is narrated by fate's perspective. Uh, they have been thrown lots of challenges by fate and the way they deal with it. Okay. That's uh, what the story is about. Because I feel all of us fe uh, face fate in our life, like at any segment, like you can be here in your life mm -hmm. and then fate comes and you are there. Or maybe it's like you are here right. and fate happens and you are there at the top. Exactly. So it's about that, like uh, people say that happily ever after is only in books and movies. There is no happily ever after in life. But actually there is no happily ever after anywhere. It's just a happy pause in life. Because uh, until and unless you are dead, you are in the coffin, your life goes on, your story goes on. Right. So the story is about uh, facing the challenges the fate throws uh, in your path and to come above it and to restart your life, to do things which you really need to do to reach at a certain point. You can be so successful. Meera is a very successful author today. Right. Vivan, is, uh, Vivan loves traveling. Kabir has Cafe Kabir. Mm -hmm. but Faith throws Nisha, lots of challenges. Nisha? Nisha has some beautiful part in her life today, and uh, you need to read the book to know about Nisha and Kabir's new journey. So, how their life changes, how fate plays with them. Like fate says in the synopsis of my book that I'm here to destroy their life, and I'm going to do that. So, it's about that that how fate plays with them, and what they do. Do they give up or do they rise above it? That's the story all about. Alright guys, we are done with this interview. We are going to leave you with a quote from Sabi's book narrated by Sabi herself. Okay, Sabi, good so place. I'll read the opening lines of my book for oh. you. That will give you a brief about the story as well. The story of life can be summarized in a few short words. It is never ending. No matter what you are going through. No matter how difficult the journey is. No matter how fate tests us. Life never stops. So I think right now like you know because of Instagram and a lot of blogs out there there's this perception that you just pack your bags and you go and you right. figure life out. Exactly. But I think that's that's a bit impractical like mm. you know you might make it but there's a huge possibility that you might not make it.